Hey, I'm Laura, and recently I got the opportunity to go to Texas and visit the set of the hit series The Chosen. Ahead of season three, I spoke with some of the cast and crew of the series to get their thoughts on the new season and what it's like playing such iconic figures. I hope you enjoy. Well, Brandon, thank you so much for chatting with us today. I really appreciate it. Well, it's great to be here, Laura. Your character is one that I think people really do love to hate a little <laughs> bit. How, how do you feel kind of essentially playing the, the nemesis of The Chosen? Uh, so The Chosen is, is, a, is, a show about, is a show about Jesus uh, and uh, about the people who knew Jesus. And all of their interactions with Jesus and their storylines and their arcs are important. Right, they're big, and sometimes they're heavy, and sometimes they're weighty. People relate to those characters in really, really profound ways. Uh, fans of the the chosen relate to me in a in a slightly different way, right? <laughs> so when fans go and talk to them, they say, "Oh, I had uh, such a an extraordinary experience watching your character grow. It was inspiring to me. I can see mm. myself in you." And when they talk to me, they say, "Oh, you." <laughs> Uh, which has been a delight. You know, I get these sort of joyful interactions, which is mm. really, really wonderful. And I think that speaks to the, the, the breadth of the show, that you can have these sort of big uh, divine experiences, but you can also enjoy a little sardonic wit. Yeah. You know, you can have that sort of pressure release valve with my character, Quintus. Yeah, and we do need that. You need yeah. that kind of dynamic in the show. It makes for great storytelling. That's and right. I think like that's something that The Chosen has done so well, is bring a kind of storytelling to the Bible narrative that we just haven't really seen, I don't think, in that's this right. way. Is that part of what interests you in being part of this series? Of course. The, the the story is divine in nature, but it's told in, in as human a way as possible. And I think that's one of the remarkable things about this show. I think it's what separates this show from a lot of the other sort of faith-forward stuff, mm -hmm. is that we get to see real and complicated, messy humanity and how that interacts with someone like Jesus. Uh, we can even see Jesus's humanity, you know? He's a, he's a funny guy, too, and he gets frustrated. Yeah. And uh, I think that's enlightening. Mm. And, and relatable. And Quintus, of course, has his quirks, his quirks, his relatable kind of bits. Yeah. What is it about Quintus, you think, that is, is relatable to the audience? There's a lot of things that are relatable. You know, on sort of a bigger picture, I think it's important for people to relate to the folks around Jesus, right? His apostles and disciples and the people... Uh, whom he affects in a really, really profound way. It's important to relate to those folks. But it's also important to relate to the Romans, mm. right? Because there are many of us who are the Romans, right? A lot of people fancy themselves the, the disciples or, or the Jews fleeing Egypt. But perhaps you do need to reflect on uh, your role as an Egyptian or a Roman, right? So there's sort of that sort of big uh, way that you can relate to Quintus, and I think it's important to. There's... Other ways too, though, you know, Quintus is a small part of a much bigger story that he doesn't fully understand. Mm. And I really, really deeply relate to that because I, I, I show up and work one or two days a season on the show. Um, my part of it is small in terms of the much bigger picture that I don't fully understand, you know, how this mm. show has affected so many folks or something more than 400 million season views through the app alone, the chosen app. Right. And that's impossible to comprehend in its totality. So I, I relate to Quintus in that way. Yeah, and yeah. It's, it's a difficult wrestle to understand, I suppose, the bigger picture, if you want to look at it that way, mm -hmm. that we all fit into, that there are these, these narratives, these, these themes of you know, identity and wrestle and everything that I think The Chosen really brings up. Yeah. With some of the questions that the series has raised so far, how do you approach that? Some of the, the human, question, human questions it asks about, why am I here? Who is Jesus? And, and what is my relationship to this big, bigger concept of, of God and humanity, etc.? How have you wrestled with those questions? The ways that, that, that working on the show has taught me to, to wrestle with those questions almost always circle back to um, kindness and generosity. You, you can see that among the characters, right? But you can also, I see it in the production of The Chosen itself. 
at this point, we've been doing this for three years now, and it really is kind of a, a familial relationship uh, between uh, my colleagues and I. And that is rare and beautiful. Um, on a set this size, it can really easily turn into um, a sort of gun for hire situation, right? Where you show up and you do your job and you leave and efficiency is key. Mm. And having, after having worked on, on this show with these folks, Dallas and uh, my castmates and the production crew, I'm starting to see that that's kind of a shame that you can center your work around, around kindness and generosity and respect for the material and respect for the fans. And it's a much more enjoyable day. Mm. And you can tell that the product is made with love. Yeah, there's a heart and, and an authenticity in it, I That's think. Right. So what are fans going to get to see from Quintus in season three? Oh, boy. So, you know, in the first two seasons, Quintus gets to work his will uh, without being hampered by things like laws or human rights, <laughs> right? Uh, uh, but in season three, we can start to see that there are other factions in the Roman Empire that he'll have to contend with. Mm. Uh, obviously, uh, Jesus and his followers are gaining a little bit of steam, so he's going to have to deal with that. So he's going to have to deal with people who are getting in his way. Yeah, and he's uh, not going to like it. I don't think he's going to like it. Uh, you know, he could be a nice guy and give way, or he could push back. I think mm. I know what Quintus is going to do. I think the fans yeah. know what Quintus is going to do. And there's something in all of the characters, I think, whether they're the bad guys or the good guys, you mm. know, that, that's not totally good, that's not totally bad. That's right. What would you say are the redeeming qualities for Quintus? Well, I think he has a lot, actually. You know, I think he wakes up every day and thinks that he's helping people by keeping the Roman Empire strong. He says that people want to be ruled. You know, he, he wants to organize their lives so that they can stay safe and productive. So in, in that way, he does have a, a, a desire to help. And I think that's a redeeming quality. Yeah. I think also, it's pretty clear that he worked to get where he is. The, the, the root of his name, Quintus, is Quint, right? Like five, you know, like quintuplets or, right. or whatever. And uh, I think that means he's a fifth son, which means that things weren't handed to him. It means mm. he has to work. So I think that that kind of drive is probably... a, a a redeeming quality. But there's also other stuff. He, he doesn't just attach himself to Matthew in, in seasons one and two because he's smart. I, I think he wants to cultivate that intelligence. Mm. You know? It's, it's sort of like a fatherly or big brother role that he takes on. So he does form connections with people. He mm. does respect people. I think even in season two, you can see he respects Jesus. Yeah. You know? He doesn't think he's a big enough problem for him to deal with yet, yeah. you know. But he does respect him, so he has lots of redeeming qualities. So is there a part then of Quintus, you think, that is interested in the teachings of Jesus, that secretly likes what's happening between Jesus and the disciples, even though he is resistant to people following Jesus? Not now. No. There's nothing that has led me to believe that he is... Uh, he might be curious just because. Mm. But I don't think that he is, uh, at this point in his life, drawn to anything that Jesus has to say. <laughs> no, okay. I mean, yeah, in season two, he's even saying, like, I, you, I thought you would be, like, a crazy person, you know? Mm. I, I thought that he would have wild hair, animal skins, you know? Yeah, we're not going to see him backflip on any of his kind of <laughs> ideologies come the end of season three. Well, no. You never know. You, what, yeah, that's right. I should say that. Uh, <laughs> s spoiler alert, right? Maybe. Yeah, yeah, I like that. That's the way to do it. But Brandon, <laughs> thank you so much for bringing Quintus to life and for chatting with us today. Thanks for stopping by, Laura. Thanks for watching. Next time, Amber Williams, who plays Tamar, shares what sets The Chosen apart. The Chosen, it's unique in a way that it's showing Jesus, the life of Jesus through those around him. And now we're going to see the challenges that come with making that decision and, and deciding to, to make that your life and, and to follow Christ. Mm -hmm.